Wake up, wake up, wake up. I am your host, Chantel, better known as Miss Recycle, and you are officially on the Wake Up and Smell the Coffee Show, Infinity TV. Now, I'm here today to just talk to you guys about some of the messages that I've been receiving, okay? People are asking me, like, why am I so aggressive? Why am I exposing my family? Why am I doing certain things? And today, I just want to let you guys know that um, I'm doing this because I feel as though that the important people in my family's history is being erased. I woke up today and I went to go Google my great grandfather's name, Reverend James B. Benton, Pastor Benton, and nothing really came up. I was like really blown away. I'm like, wow, he was a pastor of this church for several years. He actually was one of the founders of this church, okay? And nothing is coming up. Like they just totally erased him from history. Like they're trying to do me. I feel like they're trying to erase me from history as well and bring in this little minion, my sister, Doretha, to um, take my place, right? Because I wasn't willing to join their little Eastern Star Masonic movement. I'm not with it, don't want it. Like I told you before, my magic is inside of me, not outside of me, all right? Remember, greater is he or she that is in me than he or she that is in the world. So nothing that they can do, the trinkets, the charms, and none of that is gonna outweigh my magic. And I knew that from a child and they were very mad at me because of that. And because of that, I was always the black sheep, all right? But I want to get straight into it. I want y'all to take a listen to this. The one thing I did find was something off of the Mount Olive Baptist Church's website. And it gives you a brief description of the church and a little bit of history about my great-grandfather, but they didn't really mention too much about him. So take a listen, guys. About Us. <clears throat> Published by Mount Olive Baptist Church. Mount Olive Baptist Church was organized in 1923 under the leadership of the late Pastor James Hamilton inside the gates of Semit Solvay Company plant in Tonawanda, New York. In 1924, under the leadership of Pastor Clinton N. Polite, the church moved outside the company gates, at which time Pastor Polite was called to Pastor Tremont Temple Baptist Church in Buffalo, New York. He later became pastor of Calvary Baptist Church, Buffalo, New York. Okay. Pastor Merritt was called to fill the vacancy left by Pastor Polite. Pastor Merritt died in the early 1930s. Pastor James B. Benton was then called. Senate Solvay closed its village in 1941, where some of the parishioners resided. Mount Olive moved to 571 Clinton Street, Buffalo, New York. The first service was held on the first Sunday in May 1941, with approximately five families, the Pitts, Collins, Hatchets, Bentons, and Robinsons. The church remained in this location for six, six months before purchasing and moving to 616 Clinton Street, Buffalo, New York. The church was incorporated in November 1941. On December 4th, 1966, Mount Olive moved to 629E Delavan Avenue, Buffalo, New York, where Pastor Benton served until January 1981. Pastor William Gillison was called to Pastor Mount Olive in June 1981. So, as you guys hear, um, Gillison didn't come on to the scene until 1981, after my great-grandfather basically got sick and had to go lay it down, all right? Um, and ever since then, it seems like Pastor Gillison has been trying to erase my great grandfather's name. I went to church the last time I went there and, uh, I noticed that my great grandfather's pictures weren't up. His pictures used to be in the hallway. As soon as you walk in, you would see his picture and his picture wasn't up. So after church, you know, I went to the pastor and I asked him like, you know, what happened to my great grandfather's picture? And he was like, um, um, are you still a member of this church? I'm like. I'm going to always be a member of this church. Okay, well, when was the last time you were here? I'm like, what? I, You know, church is in my heart. I don't really come to church like that. Like, okay, well, so if you was here, then you would have made sure that your great-grandfather picture stayed up. And I'm like, okay. So, wow, that's a slap in the face to me because some of the members of my family are still a member of this church. So, you mean to tell me that they allowed you to take his picture down? Okay, so... The reason why I'm here today is because I'm not going to allow my family's history to be erased, okay? This is why I am so aggressive. This is why I do what I do because I feel as though my sister 
is part of their game. Okay, part of their game. Now, I did find one thing online that she did do a video, a little short video that she did of our family's legacy. And I happened to find that today when I Googled my grandfather's name, my great grandfather's name. Right. But it wasn't much. She didn't say much about it. Like, I don't know. I was confused. Okay. So therefore I said, okay, I need to go ahead and do this video. I need to do this documentary. So now what I did find was a sentence, a census from 1940. It has my great grandfather's name, Reverend James B. Benton, 35, Maggie Benton, his wife, 34, their children, Julia, Dorothy, which is my grandmother, Ruby, James, and Rosetta. All of their names is on there, their ages, and what they claim to be. Um, they basically had them put themselves on here as Negro. And we are clearly not, quote unquote, Negro. We are indigenous. We are the aboriginals. We are the originals. Forget aboriginal. We're the originals. One of the original people who walked this earth. Okay. We're from Alabama. Um, before my aunt Rosetta died, she basically told me about our history. I sat down and I was able to have a good conversation with her on my cousin's porch. Um, Cortez Phillips, we sat on her porch and we spoke before she died. And she told me about us being from a tribe called the Hitchitubbies, right? Hitchitubby, Hitchitubby. So I looked them up and lo and behold, I found them in Alabama. Okay. We have a strong lineage, right? And I believe that's why they're trying to erase it. So I'm going to tell y'all today that I am here to break every generational curse that has been placed upon my family, okay, from the beginning to the end, because somebody has to do it. Y'all have to remember that generational curses go from fourth and fifth generations down. Like, it's literally been to the 10th generation in my family, it seems like. No one is stopping it. No one is doing anything about it. And what they're doing is they're joining in on this. They're joining forces with the 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 ops, basically. Okay, like my sister throwing up the signs and she doing that. Those are Masonic symbols that she is connected to through this Eastern star, whatever that she's dealing with. Okay, and they tried to erase me from history and they wanted to replace me. They wanted to replace her. Excuse me. They wanted to replace me with her. Okay. But they couldn't do it. And I believe they was casting all type of spells on me. I told you I had them ask. They were ast astral projecting in my dreams trying to have sex with me. Okay. Uh, uh, Darius Pridgen. Okay. I can't make this shit up. And they were doing it on purpose. You see the last post that she made? Oh, you broke and you this. You, they thought I was going to be broke because they were doing some of those Egyptian money curses on me, trying to destroy my finances, trying to mess with my mind, right? Sending me people to, in my life to hurt me, right? Um, trying to silence me and things like that, but they couldn't do it, okay? And they're not gonna do it. I'm not gonna allow it to happen, right? Now, as you know, um, my sister is out here trying to be an activist. She's doing all of these things that I've always done since I was a child, all right? I've always been outspoken, and I've always, you know, exposed liars. Put it like that. As a child, they hated me because you couldn't do shit in front of me or around me without me telling on you, especially if I knew it was wrong. You know what I'm saying? Listen, they... One thing I could say is... is my demeanor protected me as a child, right? Because if I wasn't who I was, I would have been a rape victim. I would have been just sabotaged out here, okay? So instead, they couldn't destroy me in that fashion. So they just labeled me as the black sheep. Um, I talk too much. I was too outspoken. I'm bold. I'm this, I'm that, or whatever. But guess what? That's how the Most High made me. And the Most High made me that way for a reason. Because this is the season for exposure, and judgment. And these people have to be exposed. You give a liar a platform, you better know that you're going to be exposed sooner or later because somebody's going to hear the lies that's coming out your mouth and they're not going to agree with what you're saying, right? We're not going to sugarcoat what you're saying just to go along with, to go along. I'm not. 
I'm going to expose you and I'm going to tell the truth. And yes, my sister has a grandson out here that she is not claiming. She's not claiming because the boy was born or the little girl was born different. And I don't mean to be funny when I say these things, okay? I don't want to just label him as a hermaphrodite, right? But that's basically what the child was born as. The child was born with both parts. And I can understand that may shake up some people, you know, who don't understand those type of people. But you have to remember that those people are special. I was honored to know that a hermaphrodite was born in my family. Okay? Because those are the people who didn't need no one to reproduce. They reproduced on their own. That was one of the, one of the first people who walked this earth. Those were considered to be gods. So I have a young God in my family, all right? And I'm not going to allow her to just deny this baby. I found a video that she actually did about her grand village. And she had her other grandchildren on this video with her, you know, naming her grandchildren's name and did not mention, I believe his name is Marshawn or Marquan. Like, I am not going to allow them to forget your baby, baby. I'm not going to allow them. I won't ever forget them. You know, I'm not around right now and I can't, I don't really see him that much. But when I was in Buffalo, I used to let them come over my house all the time and visit. I dealt with that baby as if, you know, he was my child. Okay. Because he is my blood of my blood and the flesh of my flesh. Okay. Like I was honored to know that we had a hermaphrodite or we have a hermaphrodite in our family but she's embarrassed obviously and this is the woman of god who goes to church every sunday and she out here talking all this mess to y'all pity partying about her house being destroyed maybe her house got destroyed because when her mother left her and come came to move with me she wouldn't give her her belongings in that house, that same house where she harbored my mother's belongings is the same house that someone came in and ransacked, okay? Whoever she rented it out to, I don't know what happened because guess what? She's quick to rent out something to a, a, a frenemy, but she would not rent out to her family, okay? I always thought that when you or in a situation like that, you're supposed to look out for your family. It's not always about money. Because, you know, like, money comes and goes. I don't care about money. If you guys know me, you know I will barter. I'm a recycler, baby. I will live off the earth. That's why they don't like me. Because they can't get me caught up in a money system. First of all, there's no such thing as you doing a money curse on me. Because guess what? I don't need money. At the end of the day, I know how to survive off the land. My grandfather taught me. I was cycled with him since I was 10, 10 years old, okay? Leroy Franklin, may you rest in peace, all right? And I want to do a piece on my whole family. Each family member, I want to do a separate piece on them, you guys, just to let you guys know who I come from, where I come from, and who I am. Because if you don't know where you come from, you definitely don't know where you're going, right? And I am a descendant of the Hitchitubby tribe. Okay, my great grandfather, excuse me, my grandfather was a Blackfoot Indian, right? And my grandmother's side was the Hitchitubby Indians. So they joined in with each other and, and here I am, okay? So what one thing I'm not gonna do is allow people to erase me nor my family from history. Now I believe one of my jobs is to break these generational curses and that's exactly what I'm focusing on right now, you guys. I just want you guys to know that my aggression, I'm sincere with mine. My aggression is for a reason because I, I don't like liars. I don't like people to lie on me. Don't, you know, you're trying to throw, drag my name through the mud and you want people to look at me like I'm crazy so that they won't listen. That's the thing. They want you guys to see me as crazy so that you won't listen to what I'm telling you. But I'm telling you, everything I've ever told you, I have receipts for it. And it's also being revealed right now with the prison situation, the Byron Brown situation, the Antoine Diggs situation, like all this pedophilia and, and, and sex trafficking, human trafficking that's going on in Buffalo right now. Yes, your mayor is behind it. Your mayor is behind it. Your council members are behind it. All right. A lot of them sleep with little boys. You saw Diggs got caught, and he was the head of the Mayor Summer Youth Program for over 20 years. Byron Brown put him, who he know, who he knew was a known pedophile, right? Put him in the head of the Mayor Summer Youth Program. Do you know how many of those children got molested? 
who knows? But only one had the courage to stand up. And I'm asking that you other children, if something happens to you, please don't be afraid. Don't be embarrassed to speak out. We have to hold these people accountable. If Byron Brown has any victims out there, speak up. Most High will protect you. Believe me, you will be protected. I know it's not an easy thing to talk about. I know you may be embarrassed. It's, it's not, you know, something that you might want to discuss in public. But guess what? You can go, com you can be confidential, report these incidents, okay? And you can also get compensated for your injuries. I know that no amount of money can really heal you from what happens to you, but it can help you maneuver through life. You understand me? We have to hold these people accountable for what they're doing. And big ups to Cat Williams and 50 Cent. Oh my goodness. They say my son looks just like him, y'all. I'm going to do a video on that too, because guess what? <laughs> Have a baby by me, baby, be a millionaire. I'll need my million, 50. I am your baby mama. My son looks just like you. You better quit playing with me. <laughs> Nah, let me quit. But yo, my son does look just like him. Everybody since he was little been saying he looked like 50 Cent. So we joke about that a lot sometimes. But anywho, you know, I'm just here today, y'all, just to kind of let you guys know that I'm a cool down to earth person. And anybody know me, they know that. Like I can joke, I can have fun. But at the end of the day, I'm a no nonsense type of chick. All right. And I don't condone the BS. I don't condone the liars. You know, this girl out here going on the Tim Newkirk show, right? Tim Newkirk now all of a sudden, what you a, you a priest? I see with the collar on and all. You a priest now? Really? Come on now. Half of you dudes were drug dealers, pimps, and freaking rapists. Oh, one of them on the pedophile list. What's his name? Tony from off Abyssal? Tony from off of Bissell, I can't think of, Tone Little, that's his name, Tone Little from Bissell, now you know he's on the pedophile list, right, but he's also a pastor, make that make sense, y'all putting these people in place to molest our children, people who are not even supposed to be around children are being set in place around these children to molest them, knowing that they're not supposed to be around kids. Knowing that they're not supposed to be around children, could y'all make that make sense to me? Because I don't know what's going on. And, and a lot of y'all know about this stuff, but y'all not saying nothing. I literally went to a meeting one time about the pedophile list. I wanted to make it known to the public. And, oh, they wanted to hide it because, oh, we have some people on this list who've changed their lives around. And they're no longer, what? Are you serious? I could have swore Antoine Dick said that he had a demon inside of him that could not be tamed, that had to be killed. So there is no way that you can tell me that these pedophiles have re like established themselves in a community to the point where they have changed and they no longer think about molesting children. They no longer think about raping women. They no longer think about doing those things. They just, they're a reformed person, huh? Which is fine. You can possibly be, you can become a better person. Let me tell you something. God can, most high can change the hearts of any man, right? But it's still not right to put those people who in certain positions that you know are liable of doing certain things. I don't care how much you say they changed. Legally, right? On paper, they are not supposed to be around children. But yet, you got them ordaining them as pastors, creating their own little churches. And who comes to church? Women and their family and their babies. A lot of times, you don't even be the men in the church. It's the women and their children. You don't really see too many men in the church with their women. You see men in the church by themselves. They're the ones that's praying on the kids. Okay? i never forget. Um, damn, what was his name? Oh, Kenny Boom. He tried to rape me when I was younger, right? Tried to rape me. When I tell you, I fought to the death. And if it wasn't for Mona Lisa coming in that bathroom to get him off of me, he probably would have had me eventually. But he, listen, no, I had my legs crossed like a pret, so I'm telling you, it was wrapped around like this. He couldn't get it. Then one day I go to this church service, the, 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 the church who had all the kids in it on Bailey. Yeah, I went with my cousin Nina friend. What is her name? Tequila, Talika, to, not Talika. Damn, I can't think of her name, but it, it'll dawn on me soon. We went to church with her. This was her church, okay? And my, um... I know a couple of people who actually went to that church. I'm not even going to name no names because what went down at that church was crazy. They ended up moving the congregation to Atlanta. And when they got to Atlanta, the man moved them all into one household. And he was just having sex with everybody, the men and the women, okay? 
But anywho, I got invited to this church and I saw Kenny Boone there and he was actually a pastor. I'm like, what? This was a kid's church. I said, what? Lo and behold, this man is a rapist. A rapist. He tried to rape me. I can't make this shit up. Tried. He tried, baby. He tried hard, too, with his own nasty self. And when I saw him standing before the congregation, oh, man, I should have said something then. And I feel so bad that I didn't because I probably could have saved a lot of them young girls from being raped by him because I know he raped a lot of women in that church, a lot of little girls, okay? But the thing that had me puzzled about this church was the man could snap his fingers and then all the kids got the Holy Ghost all of a sudden. I'm like, what? I ain't never seen no shit like that in my life. And I was born and raised in the church, okay? Never seen nothing like that in my life. And then they talking in tongues. And whenever somebody speaks in tongues, you're always supposed to have an interpreter to let you know what they're saying because the average person doesn't understand that language, right? That's supposed to be the language of God. So the average person doesn't even understand that language. So now it's like, <laughs> wow. I was just blown away to see Kenny Boone, a pastor at this church, knowing that he was a rapist. Okay. And, and, and the only reason why he didn't rape me was because it was the grace of God, the grace of God, because if he would have raped me, it would have destroyed me. And they know that this is caught part of the, um, programming that's going on right now. Like, Oh gosh, what is it called? These crucifixion implants, right? It's called a crucifixion implant. So shit like that will kill you inside. And they called it the crucifixion implant. So now most of the girls that are being raped out here and the boys who are being raped out here, it traumatizes them. It traumatizes them to the point where they lose their minds. Okay. They become schizophrenic and all of these other things. And it just messes them up when it comes to dealing with society. And me personally, I probably would have turned into a murderer right? If he would have got away with raping me, I probably would have just killed every man that ever came across my path. I promise you, I would have. I would have. I would have set him up with the pussy. Not gonna lie to you. You want it this bad? You want it so bad? Okay, I'm gonna give it to you. And after I give it to you, I'm gonna kill you. Because I would have been so traumatized by what happened to me. And I know that. I said it in my head. Like if this man would have actually been able to get, have his way with me, I would have lost it. I would have lost it because he would have stole my innocence. I was a virgin at that time. He would have stole my innocence. So I say this to say, whew, be mindful of where you go to worship. Remember churches in your heart and two or more gathered in thy name is considered a congregation. Okay. Remember that we have to start meeting the minds, having a meeting of the minds. That's what's important because your conscience is what they're after. That's connected to your soul. So if you lose your mind, it's attached to your soul. You don't think that's going to affect you in life? You don't think that's going to affect your soul? Yes. That's why I call them soul snatchers. They're out here trying to snatch your soul, y'all. And y'all got to be very, very careful who you let your children around. Um, I mean, like a lot of you women are cool with having gay male friends and y'all got them all around y'all children and y'all da, 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 da. You know, I had one gay friend, right? And I love him to death. I do. Rudy. Grew up with you, went to school with you, all that, right? But I really didn't have him around my children like that. If they were around him, I was there. I was in the, not to say that he would have did something to them. I really don't believe that he would have, but it was my job as my children's mother, right? To protect them and to make sure that no harm came their way. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that he would have did anything to them, but I know the history of um, homosexuals. I know the history of um, that lifestyle. Like most of the people who are, gay or whatever, it's due to trauma. They were raped as a child or something happened as a child. Now, I can't say that that happened to Rudy. I don't know. Don't put, I'm not putting, don't try to put words in my mouth. All I'm saying is, is the history of most, um, gay people 
all right, bisexual people, is due to what happened to them as a child. And it's called child trauma, right? And that child trauma, it carries on throughout life. And a lot of the victims become victimizers. Unknowingly, unbeknownst to them, it's just a natural thing. It just goes because they feel like no one protected them, right? No one stopped it from happening. So it must be right. It must be okay. Okay. They did it to me. So I'm going to do it to somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Like I told you, if it would have happened to me, oh, I would have went stir crazy. I would have went crazy and everybody would have get it. What? What? Oh, you want to fuck? What? Oh, come on, baby. Yeah. Mm hmm. You'd have never seen that man again. You understand me? Because I would have been bitter. I would have been a bitter woman towards every man that crossed my path. And I thank God that he did not allow that to happen to me. Oh, I thank God that he did not allow that to happen to me. OK, and still protecting me now to this day. All right. Word. Because you still got him out here trying to rape adults. You got him out here trying to rape adults. You got women getting raped in the hospital in comas. They raping them. They yeah it's crazy sex is overrated um and it's called actually a what is it called the um sex misery misery sex sex misery it's a it's a one of the codes in the grid that they have that they're trying to uh put down on us but it actually comes from the sexual trauma and it brings forth sexual misery so that means like most women become promiscuous most men turn gay and they just start you know they turn other men out like you know what i'm saying like because if you think about it a gay man don't want another gay man they want a straight man they want to try to turn that straight man gay that's how the game goes you know what i'm saying and un it's very unfortunate because <sighs> this is the day and age that we are living in but i just wanted to come up on here and talk to you guys today about what's going on in this world like everybody is being exposed there's a lot of things going on that most people just don't even know about. So this is why um, things are coming to the forefront. Okay. Um, yeah. I just wanted to just make sure that um, my family, my family, right? And I'm talking all my family. I don't have no favorites. I don't care if you like me or not. Guess what? I love you. You don't have to like me. And I know why you don't like me. And it's okay. I'm not mad at you. We have been under a generational curse for years. It's called divide and conquer. If they can divide us, baby, they can conquer us. They know who we are. They knew who we, they knew who we were before we did. You understand me? We have hermaphrodites being born in our family. So therefore, you know we have a strong lineage that is connected to the gods to the cosmos, okay? That goes all the way back hundreds and thousands of years when you go into the, uh, before the Egyptians, Sumerians, the Mesopotamians, and yeah, yeah, okay? Because you got what? Hermes who mixed with oh, Aphrodite, and that's where your hermaphrodite comes in at, okay? So don't get it twisted. Don't think I'm trying to talk about my great nephew, baby. No, I'm basically praising him. I'm bigging him up. I am glad that he was born in my family or she was born in my family. All right. It's just his, his, his grandmother's not. His grandmother's not. And I want her to step up. You want to be out here protesting and doing all this other for other people? Listen, go get your grandbaby. Go give him a hug. Let him know you love him. All right. Don't show favoritism. That's not right. We should never show favoritism among our children or our grandchildren, aunt, uncle, sister, cousin, because we all are blood of our blood and flesh of our flesh. Yo, regardless if we like each other or not, there comes a time that we are going to have to join hands one way or another at some point in time. Right. So I just want to let you guys know that, like, I'm not angry. I just want the truth to come out. I'm tired of people lying on me. All my life, they've been lying on me, trying to silence me. I've been the black bald and I've been the black sheep and I've been, you know, and I've been taking it. I've been handling it. And a lot of times I've been real silent. People want to know why I got beef with Byron because he stole my ideas. I am the recycling queen. Okay. Wasn't nobody recycling in that town before me. It really wasn't even nobody recycling on the mainstream in the world until I started recycling and presented my idea to Byron. And Byron went and presented my idea to the elites. 
who do you think took over the recycling industry and tried to shut me down? I opened up a recycling company from home. I was recycling from home. Okay, baby, on my own with my family, my immediate family. Yes, baby, we did it from home, baby. I started a business from scratch, from the ground up, recycling, but they couldn't take it because that's a multi-million dollar industry that they wanted to, they, they, they just wanted it all to themselves. You know what I'm saying? So they tried to get all my ideas. They even, they put a bug in my house. Like I know what they was doing. I know what they was doing. They brought my whole, my man's family Okay, didn't even mess with him until he started messing with me, right? Once he started messing with me, all these people started coming around trying to suck up all of our information and energy and blah, blah, blah. One of his cousins even installed some electrical lines in the back apartment of my house. That's when my shit got wired. That's when little bug got put in my house. I guarantee you. Who volunteers to do electric, electrical work in your house for free? Who volunteers to do that? You know, and I was trying to tell my significant other that, you know, this shit don't sound right and I don't like it, but it was his family. So he was overlooking what they were doing, you know, and I don't know if he was in on it or not, but I know that I was been under attack since I was a baby. I have been under attack since I was a baby, baby. 626. As I'm doing my research, I realized that that is the day that the rodents, what is it? The rat, the slaughtering of the rat day. For the Pied Pipers. <laughs> June 26, baby, was the day it's, it's set aside for the slaughtering of the rats. What a coincidence. The day I was born. I was born for this. I was born for this. And I'm not afraid. I can't be afraid. Because the Most High is in me and outside of me. So that means walking with me. Yes, thy mother and father is walking with me. If y'all really believe it, it's just a man that, that, that brought all this forth, you're crazy. It was a man and a woman, okay? Just like you got a mother and father on earth, you have a mother and father in heaven. What they say, as above, right? So below. So don't get it twisted with these people. Don't get it twisted. Yes, you have a heavenly mother and father if that's how you want to see it in the cosmos or however you want to connect it, baby. Not just on earth, because what you have on earth is what you have in heaven. What's going on with you on earth is what's going on with you in heaven. As above, so below. Don't ever let anyone come into your life and tell you other than, all right? Ooh, people will try to fill you with a lot of garbage, but I'm telling you right now, you have to look or think outside of the box. Yeah, I'm exposing a lot of people. Drake connecting it to the XXX. Shay, I'm connecting it to DJ, uh, excuse me. I'm connecting it to the Benny, Benny the Butcher, or Benny Bass is what he calls himself now. The 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 uh, Griselda, yeah, yeah. The Griselda connection, they sacrificed that man. They sacrificed that man, deal or no deal, remember? He said no deal. If you look at that picture, you will see that Shay is not happy about his artist being signed over to another label. You can't tell me that. You, you, you think that man was happy about his artist being signed over to another label after he worked his ass off from the ground up to build those people up to the point where they at not right now? And then the last message he said is, if I die... Benny is the best rapper of all times. Bullshit. That's why he did that song with what's the name and what damn, what's his name? I can't think of his fucking name, but he did a song with him and he said, I'm the best rapper of all times on the same song with Benny. Now, if that wasn't a slap in the face, and I don't know what it is. But one thing that I want you guys to know is I say what I say because I got receipts. Okay? This man came to me in my freaking dreams and said, Don't let those people wear those fucking chains. What is a fucking kid? A kid is a goat. And a goat is the connection to the devil. Right? So y'all walking around with these buffalo goat chains. Not knowing that you're calling yourself a damn devil. You the buffalo devil. Yeah, because the devil was all up and through buffalo. Your mayor done sold you out on so many occasions. What? What? The, the storm where he let all those people die? He stopped the freaking emergency services from coming out and helping people? Yeah. That was all part of the ritual, right? We are connected to the CERN machine. There's a CERN machine in New York. 
And the, one of the professors that works at UB is on the committee for the CERN machine that they are building in the, is it the UK? Germany. One of them motherfucking places. They all over the fucking place with this shit. Okay? It's just, it's crazy. It's so much information that I can't even fucking keep up, all right? And the average person, it'll drive you crazy, all this information that's out here, like all the shit that's going on. And then once you tie it in, but just like Thomas said, once you discover the truth, you be, you will become astonished, right? And you will rule over all. Keep that in mind. The truth will set you free. I miss Recycle. And I'm out, baby. Y'all stay sweet. Oh, my goodness. And just don't let nobody manipulate you. They got a bunch of gaslighters out here. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And I got to shout out to Rashad Jamal. I got to shout him out. I'm definitely about to, sh like, I got to, I got to, yeah. Because something went on with him, too. Whew. And it's crazy. I feel like he be talking to me, too, and he ain't even dead. But, you know, when you connect it to the cosmos, you can speak telepathically. I don't do no astral projecting or no shit like that. I ain't never, you know, maybe I'm doing it without me knowing when I'm asleep. Because, you know, when you go into a sleep state, you basically, your body goes into the cosmos anyway. So, I don't know. But I know these people be talking to me. I don't summon the dead, baby. I guess the dead is summoning me. Because I have been getting so much information like XXX came to me yesterday and was like, don't forget about Drake. I'm like, Oh shit. And it's crazy. I came across him. I started listening to some music yesterday, right? It was crazy. I'm listening to some music. The Lakeisha girl, right? It's a new artist. And she got a song with the, um, she got a song with, um, with, um, what is her name? The City Girls. Now, she has a song with the City Girls, right? And um, I'm listening to her song, listening to their music or whatever. The next thing you know, okay, a couple of people, list, you know, how the playlist goes and they give you different artists. All of a sudden, XXX pops up. So I'm like, oh, okay, what are you doing popping up in my feed? So I said, let me listen to him and see what he's talking about. <laughs> he was reaching out to me, letting me know, don't forget about Drake, right? I don't care what anybody say. When the dead speaks, you're supposed to listen. He wasn't dead when he made that message, but he died shortly after. So now anybody in their right mind is supposed to make that connection and say, okay, boom. He said, if something happened to me, Drake did it. Now something happened to him, but no one wants to believe that Drake did it. So there you go, because Drake is also protected. Drake the Draconian. Make the connection, okay? I can't make this shit up, y'all. I get the downloads, and all I'm doing is just giving them to you as I get it, all right? The information that I get, I give it to you. And I give it to you raw and uncut. I have nothing to lie to you guys about. And guess what? If you ever catch me in a lie, if you ever think I'm lying, man, approach me. Ask me. Tell me. Or sue me. How about that? Sue me if I'm lying. Exactly. On that note, I'm out, y'all. Do the world a favor and recycle. That's all I can say. Recycle the love and recycle the knowledge, baby. Yes, yes, yes. Peace and love. Thank you. I'm out.